Welcome, everybody. This is a humorous history podcast, and we are, in fact, the Goofy Historians. Today, we're going to talk about accidental cuisine in history, and we're going to tell the stories of... Why did I do that? Fuck, I can't... Ah. We're going to tell the stories of how mud chicken, French toast, and tapas and sandwiches were invented. But first I want to welcome back Haley Beckel who will be joining us to make sure we don't catch the kitchen on fire while we're recording here. So welcome Haley. What have you been doing since uh, graduation? Well, I've got my Goofy <laughs> Historians mug here and I'm representing. Um, I've been doing some work for some very cool two guys. Uh, they're right here. I'm looking at them right now. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're called the Goofy Historians. <laughs> the, those those guys are those guys are amazing they're like um celebrities in their own mind um welcome back Haley. we really appreciate you coming back and helping us um let's go ahead and jump right into the one the food accidental cuisine that i actually do eat um and it's french toast now I don't really know the details of when Francis the first actually got around to making the French toast, but suffices to say, um, it was the year 1525 in the battle of Pavia. And if you can imagine the year 1525 in Europe is like the craziest, the 1520s you had, um, Charles V, who was the emperor, you had Francis the first, the King of France. You had Henry the eighth over there killing his wives and you had a couple of crazy popes and Charles the fifth ended up uh, capturing Francis as well as the Pope. So how did he make the French toast though, Joseph? Do you know why that <laughs> happened? I don't even know the story of that. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, the, the big people of the era were Henry the eighth you know, Charles V of Spain was also the Holy Roman Empire. Forgot to mention Suleiman the Magnificent was, was hanging around, who was the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, uh, which was peaking at that point. And Luther, and Luther was around causing havoc with everybody. And then there was Pope Clement, who was like Luther's main rival. So they were all friends and rivals. They were all like frenemies, right? Um, and it was funny because Charles V was fighting Francis I, two Catholics fighting each other in Spain. I mean, in Italy, Italy right? Yeah, yeah they, were, the they were fighting Wars. in Italy for so They weren't even fighting in their own countries. They were fighting in Italy and the Pope was sitting there in the midst of it. Um, and the Pope couldn't decide what side to come down on, right? And he was, and they were trying to get Henry VIII involved. And the Pope said, well, if Henry VIII come down and captures France, he'll make him a saint. It was, it was all very confusing. And in the end, uh, Charles V actually hired a bunch of Lutherans. But we, what happened to our, I think your internet connection died there. Um, but Francis lost that war, lost that battle, the Battle of Pavia. It, but he was he was actually there. Charles V wasn't there. Henry VIII wasn't there. Clement wasn't there. Suleiman wasn't there. But Francis I was there. He actually was on the battle. And he fought until the very end, until his horse was shot out from under him. And then the, Span or the, the Lutherans captured him, and they were about ready to kill him. One of the Spanish guys goes, no, wait, that, that's the king. We're, we're taking him, we're taking him captive because he's going to be worth a lot of money. Besides, you don't kill kings. Specifically, you don't kill Catholic kings, right? I mean, you fight them, but you don't kill them. And so they took him away and they put him in some peasant's house, a little peasant hut to hold him. And they put their guards around this little hut. So he was in this little hut with the peasant, right? And the peasant woman go, like, what do I feed a king? Right. How do how do I how do I host a king? Right. So the battle is still sort of, you know, coming to its conclusion and it's it's petering out. So she's in the house with with and he says, Well, what do you got? She says, Well, I got some eggs and got some milk and some old bread. He says, just throw it in a pot, eat it, because he's famous for saying, All is lost but my honor, right? But actually 
that was not all. He had not lost his hunger. This guy was like six foot five inches tall. He was huge. He was ravenous. He was the reason he was on the battle because he just couldn't contain his energies. He's a very energetic man, right? So he was there. So him and this little peasant lady sat together on, you know, inside her little hut and whipped up some. Of course, the French don't call it French toast, right? I mean, that's not, that's what we call it. They call it, they have some French name for it that you can, you know, when you do the the live cooking episode, you can e explain more of that. But that, it was like basically more of a soup. <laughs> it was like soggy, soggy bread with eggs and milk, right? And then, but when, when it got translated over later, uh, it, it just became what we call French toast. So that's the story. I'm just sticking with it. After 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 that, they, they did, after the battle was over, they did come and take him away from the, he didn't have to stay in the little peasant's house forever. They came and put him in a really nice prison in Spain uh, where they treated him like royalty. And he stayed there till his mom actually came and ransomed him. And they ransomed him by his own kids. So his two kids came over and lived in a jail in Spain and he got to go free. And as soon as he got free, he started the war again. Uh, but he always ate, ate, ate French toast after that. I wonder if he invited that peasant uh, to the castle when he got, when he got, I, I, I suppose not. That's the story. Well, that's, that's a good story, <laughs> I guess. But you know, Francis should have been known for something more than, more than French toast because he was a, uh, he was a really cool dude. One, one of the part of the story I like is that when he was in prison, the good prison um, in Spain, um, Charles V and went and visited them and they would just like go for strolls together, like their buddies, you know. <laughs> arm in arm. Arm yeah. in arm. Yeah, everybody was really, ah, the guys were really, um, like but, to, they, they yeah. loved each other. Okay, but but um, but his 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 sons never forgave him, and his his sons even when they got out never spoke French again. I mean, they were going, "You, you better hostage my ass, or, you know. Yeah, that uh, that yeah. that was that was great. Let me free, but keep my sons, because I've got this whole French toast thing going, and it's going to be big. All right, I'm going to franchise. <laughs> Is there he's going to need it because he, he, he had spent a lot of money to get out of get out of get out of jail, and it was he didn't get out of jail free. So if he had thought about it, he could start up a French toast franchise, and he could have paid for his ransom. Right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, is there anything that's else that we want to say about French toast? Well, we we did do another podcast on Francis. Oh yeah, you know what? We'll put the link of Francis. Watch, watch that video because it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, because the whole thing. That all was right. one period of, of, of the early 1500s when all of Europe was was ruled by teenagers. It, it, it was funny. <laughs> it's like... Thank you so much, David and Joseph, for explaining a little bit about French toast and the Battle of Pavia. So now it's my turn to show you how to make some traditional French toast. But no, we are not going to be making the bread soup kind of dish that Francis invented. We're going to be doing the recipe more so as we know it today, because I don't want salmonella. So let's get started. So as Joseph explained, this dish is like a nasty bread kind of soup. And so that is why I'm using a, a thicker bread, challah bread, because that will, you know, absorb the egg better and it will kind of have this nice fluffy taste. Um, but of course we're not doing the stew part. So yeah, I'm just gonna mix up the eggs here. I just took two. I think that'll be enough for how much bread we have. And then I'm just gonna add a splash of almond milk because I'm lactose intolerant. There was also this guy, Pope Clement, who was really bad at making decisions. And when he did, he was always wrong, which is why in 1527, two years after the Battle of Pavia, Rome was sacked by unpaid troops. So I guess that you could say Francis's loss wasn't really all that bad. Sure, he lost his two sons, but the land was taken two years after. And I just add a little bit of cinnamon to our egg mixture. And now I'm going to heat up some butter in a pan and then dip the bread and fry it. 
All right, so our pan is now heated up and I'm gonna dip our bread into this egg mixture. You know, giving up your first two sons sounds pretty medieval. I mean, this is the 1500s. All right, so we have our French toast here and let's give it a taste. I actually didn't have maple syrup, so I just did it with honey, which I don't know if that's more accurate or less accurate. I mean, we'll find out. Cheers. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's French toast. I mean, but I'm kind of wondering how the bread stew soup French toast would taste. Would it taste like super eggy or like meaty? I just feel like the bread would be so nasty. Anyways, I'm gonna finish this and pass it back off to Joseph and David to talk about mud chicken. Let's move to the, um, my next favorite food, um, which is mud chicken. I, I have this all the time. It's my favorite food. Um, I cook it regularly. <laughs> no, I you don't. Go, you go hit it. You this, get is the, the, this is the story, and I can never backyard, pronounce Hit the I, chicken in the head. I can never pronounce these guys' names, so I won't even try. But um, this guy, Lu Bang, becomes the first emperor of the Han Dynasty. And um, he's the one who invented mud chicken, I guess is the story. But there's probably a lot of stories because this happened. His he reigned the his his from 202 to 195 BC. All right, so this is a long time ago. Do we yeah. really know? So he, go ahead. He, yeah, there, there's different stories of how mud chicken was. Uh, but I'll give you a brief uh, a brief synopsis of like 4,000 2,000 years of. Uh, you know what, Chinese Joseph? I can't. Before. I'm sorry, but I can't hear you. So I know that the recording is not going to be able to hear you. I don't know why. Huh? And can Haley, you can me? you unmute for a second? I, yeah, I can. I can hear you. I can. I can hear hear you. you can hear Joseph. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's keep going. So mud chicken. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, China, China goes, the first dynasty in China was the Shia dynasty about 2,000 years ago, which is like, you know, 500 years after the Great Pyramids were made in Egypt. But it, uh, they had no writing, and everything we know about the Shia, we, we learn about from dynasties that came after it. The big dynasty uh, in the BC was called the Zhou, the Zhou dynasty, and they, over, they overthrew a dynasty called the Shang. And they, they started out really well. The the, Shah, the the Zhou dynasty lasted about 750 years. And it started out really well, but it started to go bad after about 200 years and it kept getting worse and worse. The last hundred or so years of the Zhou dynasty was, was a time called the Warring States period. It gives you some sense of what's going on. It is sort of fragmented and, and gone into very little states and they were all like little warlords fighting each other. And that happens in China throughout. It's simply, it unites and then it falls apart and then it unites and it falls apart. Unlike European histories after the Roman empire, we fell apart and that was it. Right? We just stayed apart forever. Uh, but the, but it fell apart and, and during this, the, the time of divisions in the warring states, that was the time actually of Confucius and Lao Tzu and uh, the great poets and the great philosophers and the great historians of China. But there's one, but the guy who united them all again was a guy called Qing Shi Huangdi, which is the first emperor. And he's the one who's famous for the terracotta warriors, right? He was also- In my, in my notes, I have that he's the bad guy. In this story. He is. He's, he he united, and the reason he united it because he was pretty much of an asshole, right? He he did unify China, right? And he systematized the roads and the measurements and the money and the monetary system. And everybody was united and think. But imagine that taking a, you know, a hundred warring states and putting them all together in one, one China. You don't do that by being a nice guy, right? And one of the things, he, he was a control freak, and he says, everybody's got to think like me. So one of the things he's famous for is burning all the books, because all thought is gone but my thought, right? And then instead of just burning all the books, he had to bury all the scholars, because 
the scholars could just rewrite the books, right? right? Well, that's but rude. just yeah, that's rude. And and and, and to top it off, he buried him alive. <laughs> so 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 he's famous for the terracotta warriors and unifying the the weights and measures, burying scholars alive and burning books. Now, the, so he did cor correct China. me if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but you. You saw the terracotta warriors because you sent me pictures. These are these warriors that were life size, like thousands yeah, of them yeah, all I, buried. Yeah. I mean, what was that like? Times. Was that it's amazing? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. When I first, I, yeah, when I first saw them back in 1988 or 85 or something, uh, you could drive right up to it. Right, you could drive up to it, get out, and go go into like where they were buried. They were just digging them out, right? I went back a few years ago and you can't get anywhere near it, right? You you can drive in and they put you on a little bus and they, they take you there and they you know they screen you. Uh, but yeah, they're still there. It's it's a, it's amazing. So he did that. Why and did they have it, to increase the security? Were those were those guys like turned into zombies and trying to like leave their little pit? Absolutely. They were like zombies, man. You could uh, well, they were being pillaged. They don't, tourists were coming and taking off noses and stuff, right? So, anyway, right, so how did how did Lu Bing get the chicken in the mud? Okay, so obviously, Ching Shi Wang Di nobody liked, right? They liked that he united China, but everybody was pissed at him. So it started falling apart right away, right? Including one of his major generals called Xiang Yu. Uh, started a rebel and then everything. He died and there was a big rebel. All these rebellions were going on. And one of the rebels was this guy, the the guy called um, um, Liu Bang. Liu, Liu, Liu Bang, yeah, he was the one. And he wasn't one of the main generals. He was like a little sheriff in this little small county. He was like, nothing was going on with him. And at one time he was he was he was actually transporting some prisoners that Chu Shi Wang Di was bringing over for execution, and it, it was an overnight stop, so he had to sleep overnight. When he woke up, half of his prisoners had escaped, right? And during the Shi Qing Shi the, the Qin Dynasty, right? You don't make mistakes. If you make mistakes, you get your head cut off. So he was going to be the one going to the next city for to, to get to get to get killed so he says well forget that which is everybody's doing if the only prison if the only punishment is you know uh, death right you're either gonna die or you're gonna rebel so he's he took the rest of his prisoners and says well i'll let you go but follow me i'm gonna be your rebel leader so with this little group of prisoners he set off on one of the rebels and one of the times he was like raiding the chin camp and he took one of their chickens and he was running away with it. Uh, and their army woke up and they were chasing him and he had to hide the chicken. So he, he covered the chicken in mud, put it in the ground, you know, hid it and he ran away, right? And a little while he's with his, his, his escapes, escaped prisoners and he goes, I have to go back and get my chicken. And they go, no, you're, you're, you're crazy, man. Just leave the chicken. <laughs> Lu Bang, leave the chicken. We got to get out of here. He goes, no, I got to go get the chicken. So he sneaks back at night, gets the chicken. Of course, he doesn't wash the mud off, right? Because he's still a rebel. So he gets the he gets the muddy chicken, runs back to his troops, and they're still in a hurry. So they light light this little fire and they put the mud and everything right on the fire. And what happens is is that this mud is like clay and it gets hard, right? So it becomes like a a pressure cooker. The pressure cooker is this chicken inside of it where all the juice and they had some lotus leaves in there and it got buried with. So when he actually broke open the chicken, it was like this very juicy, like Costco chicken, right? And uh, so that was how he, and, and, and he was probably very hungry, right? To have risked his life to go back and get his uh, chicken. So that probably helped the taste. Uh, and that was the origin of, and, and you know, he told the story after he became emperor, it's all the little emperor, uh, all the little prince and prislings right? about how he was the, while they're eating their mud chicken, you got to tell the story of when I was a young rebel. <laughs> and that's, he's the, like, and that's he's the story. Like, he's like the, the Chinese Kentucky fried chicken dude. 
No, absolutely. Actually, he franchised. Well, <laughs> And, and he's like, he's, that's no, how he he's founded his general, empire. He's like he's like General Tao's chicken. Who you? That's yeah. an interesting story too, because General General Tao is not known for chicken in China. He's a famous general, but in America, that's a Chinese food dish. It's very yummy. It's great, General Tao. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that that that's the story. And the Han Dynasty lasted four hundred years. Uh, so, because it was founded on this franchise, they could afford uh, to to keep the empire going. And then uh, it was, and it was contemporaneous with the Roman Empire, and it was an equal amount of uh, space. It was as big as the Roman Empire, and it lasted as long as the Roman Empire. It was probably better organized. And there was even some indication that at one point Han soldiers had a war with the Roman soldiers, and uh, at the very edge of both of well. What happens is the Roman soldiers got captured by the Persian soldiers, and so the, and they joined the Persian army, and then the Persians say, you go fight the Chinese, and they did, and they lost. So not only, well, they lost to the Persians, so, you know, and then they go over later and get, like, like they, they, they lose to the Chinese. Because they did find that the remains of this battle with Chinese weapons and Roman weapons, you know, buried together. So at some point, there, were, there was a battle between the Wow, that's a that's Chinese. amazing. I never yeah. knew that the Chinese had fought the um, the Romans. Some Roman you know soldiers, what's interesting yeah. is that is that chicken survived too, because that's the same chicken that laid the eggs for Francis's French toast. <laughs> I think so. It's all connected. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> all right. So that's that's it was awesome. The same chicken. It's the same damn chicken. <laughs> All right. So okay. we've We're got the chicken. Room. We've got the French toast. Haley, do you have stuff to say about maybe um, sandwiches or tapas? The um, Earl of Sandwich was an interesting character. Mm -hmm. did, I've, I've heard of him as well. Yeah. Did you know that the, did you know the Earl of Sandwich who lived a long time, 1718, 1792. His real name was John Montagu. He was the yeah. fourth Earl of Sandwich. And he was also the postmaster. He was a statesman. He was the Lord Admiralty of the Navy, he was the Secretary of State. But also, I think what he was was a gambler. Um, and he couldn't sit still long enough to eat. So they would bring him pieces of a sandwich like meat and bread and he invented the sandwich but you know what's cool about this guy too the sandwich guy he's the one who sponsored captain cook yeah yeah captain james cook of the yep. starfleet enterprise no that's someone else yeah yeah the other the other james cook um <laughs> yeah, james Hawaii. James. he he he, did. he discovered yeah. hawaii he he loved hawaii so much that he's buried there. <laughs> yeah, right. Also, also. No, it's uh, true. He, he died he, there. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I uh, went to the site where he died. I could tell you that story someday. They, they have a big, they, they have this big, a big uh, monument there where he died on his other side of the bay. And I, I, I borrowed this kayak from these like kayak people, and I kayaked over to the monument right but when you're going across this bay you have the monument you can look at right but when i turned around to go back there was no landmark <laughs> I go, how do i find these poor people who loaned me their kayak so i had to like it was it was in the, the it was getting dark and the waves were going out and i was going oh my I'm captain cook here i come make room for me <laughs> oh my god so that monument no, could i would never i would before, never both borrow me and cook kayak you know what? The ocean, <laughs> that was, that was, the ocean was, is scary. It just yeah, is. The ocean I don't is like scary. Yeah. You know, you don't know what's living down there. Um. <laughs> okay, so we've got yeah. sandwiches. We've got, we've got. Well, well yeah, 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 yeah. We've got yeah. French toast. What else? Yeah. Sandwich guy, you want to say? Yeah, yeah. So the, the the one thing that someone did say about him is Cheval has seldom has any man held so many offices and accomplished so little, right? So uh, apparently, 
I think one of the things about all these men we talk about and women like Isabella and, and, and Joan of Arc is like they all have attention deficit disorder, right? They just have boundless amount of energy and they could just not focus. They're like doing one thing and then they're doing another thing and they're like, Alexander the Great, let's go out and conquer the world. And they get people to follow up, right? So I think the problem with the, a modern society is like we're, they're treating all these people with attention deficit disorder with a lot of energy, right? This, these kids who are bounding off the walls, like those are the next Alexander the Greats. Like let them be, right? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, maybe. So yeah, that's uh, maybe or maybe yeah, they the just Earl need of sandwich, So oh, and yeah, and, and and there still is an Earl of Sandwich. You can go to England and go have a sandwich with the Earl of Sandwich, if if you wanted to. And, and there's a franchise you. that sells sandwiches called Earl of Sandwich. That's the first thing that comes sandwich. up when you Google it. I wonder if the real Earl of Sandwiches gets royalties. I doubt it. He Probably should, doesn't. He need should it. try. This All is right, the whole, so the whole franchise the, thing. I guess the last one on our list is tapas, and oh, yeah. everybody like. Oh, oh, oh one, one last thing, Earl said. There are islands named the Islands of Sandwich, right? And they were named by, by Cook, Admiral Cook, because of his friendship with the Earl of Sandwich. So, not only does he get a sandwich named after him, he gets islands named after him, right? So, th so there you go. You can have a sandwich on the Earl of Sandwich. You can have it a sandwich on the Isle of Sandwich with the Earl of Sandwich, if you wanted to, if you could arrange that. And that dude, okay, did, that's it. And, okay. and that guy actually did nothing. He he just sat there and he liked to gamble. He, he he never went to the Isle of Sandwich. Uh, All right. <laughs> so anyway, but he stayed seated. That was the important thing. So yeah. tapas. Can we talk about tapas? Okay. So tapas. Everybody knows tapas except me. I only know tacos. <laughs> But taco, so King Alfonso yeah. the tenth, you know, yeah, he was this man. is almost as bad as the Chinese thing because this guy reigned in the height of the Middle Ages, right? In twelve hundred. Yeah, yeah. Genghis Khan yeah. was running around. We should talk about Genghis, Genghis Khan. Khan. Was running around. You know, yeah, Genghis yeah. Khan, he <laughs> loved Calamity. Never had a Calum sandwich in his life. Yeah, or maybe Genghis, he did. Khan, Genghis Khan loved chamomile tea. There's nothing better to relax oh, you know. after pillaging and raping than a nice cup of chamomile tea. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. King Alfonso X, what does he have to do with tapas? Does anybody know? I do. Okay. I know, I've been to Spain. I know all about this, right? It's, it's, it, tapas are huge in Spain. They go... It's, it's uh, vamos a tapas, vamos a tapas. That means let's go get tapas, right? And what it is, it's more like, um, like we would say, let's go get drinks, right? They would say, let's go get tapas because that means you're going to drink, right? But you're also going to get these little, little fancy dishes with little food like sardines and cheese and grapes, meat, ham, thousands and thousands of little dishes. We can get like a picture of all the different types of tapas. But how it started was with Alfonso X of Castile. It was before Spain was united, right? Ferdinand and Isabella are the assholes who united Spain and kicked out the Jews and kicked out, and kicked out the, the Muslims and, and started the Inquisition and said, we're gonna, have, we're gonna be one good Catholic country and that's all we're gonna be is one good Catholic country. That's it. But before, 200 years before them, there was this guy called Alfonso X and he was the dude. He was the dude before the award. He was the original dude, right? Like the dude abides. The kids that reference from uh, the great Lebowski. Um, so unlike Ferdinand and Isabella, he was. He said, "Muslims, come on in. Jews, come on in. Protestants, everybody is welcome. Come on, everybody, come in and bring your books, bring your languages, bring your scholarships." Because at this time. It, it, Europe was in the friggin' Middle Ages, right? And the Muslims' empires were going through their renaissance, right? They had Aristotle, they had Plato, they, they were inventing algebra, right? They were inventing trigonometry. They were like years ahead of everybody. So he invited them all, and he, he was getting them to, to translate Aristotle and Plato from the Arabic to Spanish, right? Not from the Greek. Yeah, they called him the, his nickname was the translator. The tr 
translator because he got everybody translating. And not only that, he invented sherry, right? The, the drink, right? So he was a drinking man, a uh, high class. Maybe he didn't invent it, he popularized it. And he invented tapas because what he didn't, so there were a lot of little bars around Castile at that time and they didn't serve any food. People were just going there to drink and recite existential love poetry and then getting in fights and bar fights. He says, well, he wanted to raise it up a level, right? So he says, anybody who's selling drinks anywhere, they have to serve food with it. That's the law because we have food. And you know, if you have food and drinks, you're gonna be talking, you're gonna be sharing food. And so all the little bartenders go, well, how, what's the easiest way to comply with this regulation, right? So what they did, once they had it, they go, well, here's the glass. It, there's your food. I've, 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 I've covered the regulation, right? So the people who are like, and tapa in Spain means a top, to put a top on something, like uh, tapa to I mean, close your eyes. Um, so, so, and then, so that was the basic regulation and, and it worked because you had your de technically serving right. food with your wine. That, that, uh, then someone, we're less than a minute to go here before this. Okay. So, so it's still like that today because you have bars that have a liquor license where they have to serve food. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, basically, so, so some of the, the next bar put cheese on their bread and go, well, let's go. Everybody went to his bar and somebody put an olive on his and everybody went to their bar. And someone said, well, let's put ham, cheese and olive. And then the Earl of Sandwich showed up and he just put his friggin' sandwich on top of the glass. And then everybody went to his bar. And it was this big competition until eventually it just, you know, got out of control. And they said, forget the wine, just give me the tapa. And that's how it happened. That's the story I'm sticking with. All right, that's great. And they put egg on it. It was the same egg that Francis had, or will have. We will have custom t-shirts available for this show. So please check out www.goofyhistorians.com, the store area. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Later in the month, we're going to be doing a video on UFOs, which is very much anticipated. We're going to actually have a guest that has seen a UFO. And we're going to basically take a look at different perspectives on um, how people feel about UFOs. So great. Don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll talk to you soon.